Good evening, and God bless you all on tonight. I would like to welcome you all back to my channel, Learning with Elder Shavar Ingram. And tonight we're so grateful and we're thankful that God granted us another opportunity to be able to teach his word on tonight. We're so thankful that God blessed me with this platform to be able to share with you all God's word. Tonight we're still in the vein of trusting. And we're going to call the series on tonight. We're starting a brand new series, but we're going to entitle this on tonight. Have you learned how to trust in him? Part one. And I want to ask that as a question to you all. It's something for you all to search your own hearts. But have you learned how to trust in him? Part one. So we're going to be talking about that tonight. We're going to go into a word of prayer. And we're going to jump right into our Bible lesson. As those of you who have become accustomed to this channel, we always want to start off our Bible lesson with prayer because we want God to bless us. We want God to enlighten us. We want God to come in and just have his way in this Bible lesson tonight. Uh, we want God to open up our understanding. And we just want to receive everything that God uh, is speaking to us on tonight. So if you all do not mind, would you go into a word of prayer with me? Pray with me. Let's get in a quiet place and let us pray together that we might invoke God's presence. Amen. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, that you have granted us to be able to share your word. Lord, I pray that you would touch the hearts and the minds of every person who has tuned into this channel. Lord, I ask that you would speak to their hearts, that you would speak to the minds of your people. Lord, I pray that this lesson would draw your people. I pray that this lesson would draw that person, Lord, who is wondering who you are, that person who has uh, doubts about your very presence, that person who doesn't know you, Lord. I pray that through this Bible lesson, Lord, that you would draw them in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I just pray that you would just come in and let your Holy Spirit have its way. I pray that you would bless me and anoint me to be able to share and teach this lesson, Lord, the way that you have given it to me. Lord, I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Come in and just have your perfect way. Teach us through your word, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. So tonight, um, I kind of wanted to do a lesson on Israel, the children of Israel. And I kind of want to go over some of the things from their life uh, to kind of relate and show you all how God led them for 40 years. My God, God led them for 40 years in the wilderness. And those uh, children of Israel never learned how to trust in God. We don't want that to be uh, our example. We don't want that to be our testimony that God led us for 40 years, but we never learned how to trust in him. So this is what we want to talk about on tonight. Uh, we're going to dive a little deep into the children of Israel and kind of pull out some things. And hopefully we can see ourselves in some of these examples of the children of Israel. I'm going to get ready to start our timer and we're going to jump right into this Bible lesson for tonight. But have you learned to trust in him? All right. I'm kind of going to be giving an overview. I would encourage you, class, to go back and read Exodus. I would encourage you to study the book of Exodus so that you can get a great understanding of what some of the things that we're going to be teaching on tonight. Amen. But when you look at the book of Exodus, we when you look at the children of Israel, we know that they were uh, enslaved to the Egyptians. And they were enslaved for over 400 years. And God raises up a leader in Moses. And I'm sure many of you have heard the story of Moses and Aaron and how he delivered the children of Israel out of bondage, out of Egypt. But let us look at this thing today. I want us to see how this relates to our lives. Many of us, those of us who were are saved, 
uh, God pulled us out of a life of sin and shame. We were in bondage to the devil. We were in bondage to our flesh. And God pulled us out of slavery to sin. We are freed from sin. You no longer have to be, a, be in bondage to sin. God set us free from sin. But even though we're set free, you have got to learn how to trust in God. So again, we want to talk about uh, the children of Israel. Again, they were in bondage to the Egyptians and God gets ready. Uh, he raises up a leader in Moses and Aaron. And you all know how God said, uh, told Moses to go down to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. And we know that the the, uh, the Egypt, that the Pharaoh did not want to let the children of Israel go. So God had to send 10 plagues upon them. Hallelujah. In order to be able to deliver his people from bondage. Now, one of the things I want to look at is in Deuteronomy chapter seven and eight. It says, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondman from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, I got that scripture to help us to see that it says that God, brought, this was Moses writing to the children of Israel. He said that God brought you out with a mighty hand. I want you to understand that uh, God, when he delivered the children of Israel, he could have just spoken and he could have just said, uh, destroyed all the Egyptians. But God specifically did 10 plagues of judgment upon them. And one of the things I want us to take note of is that when he was plaguing the Egyptians, it never plagued the Israelites. Let me say that again. When God was plaguing the Egyptians and sending these plagues upon the children or the, the Egyptians, the children of Israel were never affected by those plagues. Now, why do you bring that up, preacher? I bring that up because uh, it shows you that God wanted them to learn that they can trust and rely and depend on his power. I believe God was trying to help them to learn how to rely and learn how to trust in him. And it's the same way with us, you all. When God saves you, there are some things God rescued you all from. There are some habits that God has broken in your life. And you have got to get to the place where you appreciate what God is doing for you. I believe God wanted the children of Israel to appreciate the plagues that he was putting on the enemy and it was not affecting them. See, when God does things in our lives, it should compel us to put our trust and reliance on him. Again, when he did these plagues, it never affected the children of Israel. I know one of the plagues, uh, you all, you have to do your study in, in the book of Egypt because I'm trying to just give you an overview on tonight. But when it was total darkness that the people could feel it in Egypt, it never affected the children of Israel. When they had frogs, when they had lice, all these plagues, uh, when it affected the Egyptians, it never affected the children of Israel, because God wanted them to know, I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting your battles. I'm bringing judgment up on them for your sake. And God, again, when he did that, he wanted them to begin to rely upon him because he brought them out with a mighty hand. And we know that the final plague was the death of the firstborn. And we know that, that it did not affect the children of Israel because God they obeyed what God told them to do by putting the blood upon the, their doorpost and the death angel passed over them. 
So when God brings them out of Egypt, hallelujah, um, they're thrusted out of Egypt. And God brings the children of Israel out. And we know that they get to the edge of the Red Sea. They are encamped all around by the wilderness. And this is when uh, Pharaoh begins to pursue the children of Israel. So again, they have the Red Sea in front of them. They have the wilderness on each side. And behind them, they have Pharaoh's army. I know I'm going fast, y'all, but again, I want you to go back and read this. But I'm trying to paint a picture how God is trying to show these people. He's trying to teach them that they can rely upon him. He's trying to show them. He's trying to help them to learn to put their trust in him. And this is why if you read in the 14th chapter of Exodus, God specifically tells Moses to lead the people to this place. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And it says that Pharaoh uh, came up on them at the place where God told them to go. Sometimes God will tell us to go places and he will tell us to go specific places. And it seems like the enemy comes against us mightily. There's attacks that come against us because we obey God. But again, I believe God sometimes does that so that we can learn how to put our trust in him. So again, in the 14th chapter of Exodus, they are at a place where God told them to go. They're, they're encamped by the wilderness. And Pharaoh is right behind them trying to bring them back into bondage. And the Bible tells us that God opens up the Red Sea for them. And he brings a strong east wind all night. And he causes the ground to be completely dry. Now you say, preacher, do you believe all this? Yes, I believe that God split the Red Sea and he caused his people to walk on dry land. Why was it so important that you just not just read the Bible, but that you believe the Bible? Because if God could split the Red Sea, he can handle my problems. Let me say that again. If God is so powerful enough to split the Red Sea and deliver his people, he can deliver you from habits. He can deliver you from bondages. God can take care of your financial issues. God can help you with that, uh, that, ha that habit that you're struggling with, that addiction. God can break those things. If he did it for his people in Israel, see, when we read God's word, it should give us, it should build up faith and confidence in us that if God was able to help them, he can help me. He helped the whole nation. Let me say that again. God delivered a whole nation. You're just one person. You're just one family. Don't you think it's harder to deliver a nation than it is to deliver just you and your family or your situation that you're going through? Your situation is not too hard for God. And this is why I believe in the Bible. This is why I have put faith in the Bible, because God has helped me through so many things. He's rescued me and he's helped me through so many difficulties in my life. And that comes from confidence in God that if he was able to deliver his people and open up a Red Sea and make a way out of no way for them. He can make a way out of no way for you. He can change your situation around if you allow him, if you will trust him. So like when we go back to the children of Israel, again, he made a way for them. He opened up the sea for them so that they can put their reliance and their trust in him. And they were able to pass on dry land and notice when the enemy tried to do it, when the Egyptians tried to do uh, the same thing, their wheels begin to fall off. They begin, God began to fight for them. And God caused that Red Sea to come back over them and God destroyed all of their enemies. And we see in the ch in chapter 15 of Exodus that Miriam this Miriam is Moses' sister. They begin to celebrate. They begin to praise God 
and they begin to play tambourines and they begin to dance and shout and praise God for his many wonderful works that he performed in delivering them from the children of Israel. And it's so important that you develop a, uh, a praise every time God does something from you. But when you really do the study again in the chapter 15, after God delivers them from the children of Israel or from the Egyptians, they go in the wilderness for three days. And they're not able to find water. And let me say this while we're talking about the wilderness. What is the wilderness? Um, a wilderness is an area or region uncultivated unmanaged or unproductive it's an empty or pathless area you do not know where you're going i'm gonna say that again you do not know where you're going when you're in a wilderness it's barren and it's a desert place you don't know where you're going so when you don't know where you're going you have to rely on god let me say that again when you don't know where you're going, you have got to rely and trust in God. So I believe, hallelujah, that God led them in the wilderness. And the wilderness is a place, again, where you don't know where you're going. It's an area or a region uh, that's uncultivated. You, you, you can't find your way out in the wilderness. You can't find your way through in the wilderness. It's worse than a maze is. So the only way that you can make it through a wilderness is if you follow God, if you follow God's leading, if you follow God's voice. And I believe that God led them in the wilderness to show them, to teach them how to learn to put their trust in him. And sadly, they did not learn how to put their trust in God. Again, when we go back to chapter 15 of exodus they're celebrating their victory over uh being delivered from egypt and immediately they go on the wilderness and they're uh walking in the wilderness they don't know where they're going the the wilderness hallelujah i want you to understand some of us are in the wilderness many times in this life this life is uncertainty we don't know where we're going sometimes i believe god puts us in a place where we don't know where we're going sometimes there's areas i know some of you all i'm talking to tonight there's uh areas you don't know where to go you don't know the next step you don't know what to do in life hallelujah god you're in a wilderness place but a wilderness is a kind of a blessing in disguise because it makes you have to uh, learn how to depend on God. But the problem with the wilderness uh, issues as it is with them was they began to complain. They began to panic. They began to worry because they didn't know where they're going. And so many of us, uh, when we encounter areas in our lives where we don't know where to go, or what to do, we begin to panic. We begin to get frightened. We don't know what to do. Lord, what do we do? We get scared. We get worried. But when you can learn how to trust God in your wilderness, hallelujah, he'll bring you through because he's the only one that can bring you through a wilderness situation. But again, when you look at this chapter 15, it talks about that the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness for three days and they were not able to get water and they begin to complain to moses and say why did you bring us out of egypt to kill us with thirst let me say this again we're getting ready to uh end this lesson and we're going to pick this up next week but again i mentioned about god in the plagues i mentioned about god with the red sea because that was showing you if God was able to split the Red Sea, if God was able to put a plague upon this uh, this nation of this nation of Egypt, don't you think He can feed you or feed you or give you drinking water? 
My God, so many times we forget the things that God has done in our lives. If God helps you to pay this bill, don't you think he can help you pay this other bill? If God brought you through a battle of depression and all these other things, don't you think that he can help you with your situation? Let me say this. If God saved your life from a life of sin and shame, if God delivered you from the lake of fire so that you are not going to experience hell, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You, you have faith, hallelujah, to believe that God has saved you from your sins. Why wouldn't you think God can help us in all areas of our lives? If you have faith to believe that Jesus Christ is Savior and that he can uh, deliver you and forgive you of all your sins, he can help you with the problem that you're facing. So again, they never relied on what God did previously. You have to rely on God uh, previous victories in your lives. Don't forget the victories that and the things that God has performed in your lives. You have to hold on to those things. You have got to remember those things. And again, if he was able to split the Red Sea, if he was able to cause them to walk on that land, on that dry land, if he was able to put 10 plagues upon that evil nation that held, had them in bondage, why wouldn't he give you all water? And they question God. They question God. Do you even care about us? Why would you bring us out here to destroy us, Lord? And again, I believe God brought, him, brought them through the wilderness for them to learn how to put their trust in God. If God did all these things, of course he's going to give you water because water means provision. And that's all the time that we have for tonight. Uh, we're going to pick this lesson up next week, uh, next Thursday. If you are not subscribed to this channel, I pray that you would consider joining this channel. We are on every Thursday evening at 5 p.m. teaching Bible lessons just like this. And we also have sermons at times as well. So I pray that you all will come back next week. We're going to continue this lesson. Have you learned how to trust in him? We say God bless you. You all have a blessed and prosperous week. God bless. If you do not know the Lord, in the pardon of your sins, and you have not confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you uh, to give your life to Christ. The Bible uh, simply says in Romans that if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I pray that you would repeat this prayer after me and mean it in your heart. If you would like to give your life to Christ tonight, uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm a sinner and I have done so many things wrong in my life. And Lord, I ask that you would please forgive me for every sin, every shortcoming and everything that I've done that was uh, contrary to your spirit. Lord, I ask that you would forgive me. I ask that you would come into my life, that you would save me and live in me, and help me to uh, do your perfect will, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, if you have prayed that prayer from your heart and believed that prayer, you are saved. And I would encourage you, now that you are saved, the work starts. Hallelujah. I pray that you would seek the Lord and ask God to help you find a Bible-believing church so that you can grow and be the person that God has destined you to be. I say, God bless you. I encourage you. And I thank God for your salvation for tonight. We say, God bless you. And we pray that you will continue to watch this channel as we continue to put out content to help you grow in your Christian walk. We say, God bless you.